The following game has been rated E10+, Plus, which is short for everyone aged 10 and up by the ESRB for fantasy violence and online interactions are not rated by the ESRB. So basically fantasy violence. Uh, that means anyone under the age of 10 should not be watching this video. You have been warned. Greetings and salutations, I am Outlier and I bid you welcome uh, to this channel. Joining me today is of course my usual co-hosts, Snowball and Wolf. And today we are returning back to Minecraft. So the premise of Minecraft is that it's an open-world crafting survival simulation game. Well, I'm not certain how simulation it is, given the fact that it's predominantly made out of three-dimensional cubes of various colors and consistencies, known as resources. And you can basically take apart anything that you find in the world to get access to these resources and use them to... Well, build whatever you want. And it's a survival game in that uh, you do have a hunger meter, so you do have to keep your character fed. And uh, if it gets too dark out and slash or you walk into the wrong section of the world, uh, things will come and try to actually kill your character. So there's that. And that's pretty much the gist of the game. Uh, there is a... I don't want to call it a story, but there is an end goal to the game. While it is open world, it's not open-ended to the extent where there's no ending. Uh, there is a final objective you have to complete, and that is to kill this massive boss-like creature known as the Ender Dragon. I've heard it's quite large, quite difficult, and requires quite a bit of uh, prep work in order to actually get to the Ender Dragon, let alone fight it. Well, because I've never actually done it myself, uh, truth be told, I've only ever actually read about the Ender Dragon and have seen people talk about it. I've never bothered to uh, deal with it myself or fight it myself, mostly because if I'm playing Minecraft, it's not to go out adventuring to kill the massive end-of-world, end-of-game boss type thing. It's to take apart a mountain to, well, build a castle. Which is what I generally do most of the time. Uh, this time slightly different the fact I've forgone my usual castle because I've built my castle. I've built my castle many times. I've even completed it twice, I think. Yeah, twice. Not on this game. Well, not on this version of the game anyway. So I've decided to build something different, as we will see shortly, because I'm still currently building it. And before I get on to building it, it should be noted that this game is of course made by... Thank you again. And uh, that being said, let us begin. Right, so it is raining. And it is not my normal loading spot. My normal loading spot is actually right out here. And uh, I should point out that while I normally say I haven't really touched this game 
Uh, since the last video I made, that's not entirely true. I have actually played a small little bit. Haven't really done much of anything. It was more just basically mine out more of the quarry to get more stone to build more of the massive, massive project that I'm currently working on. And uh, I'm pretty much gotten just to the outer edge. I think I got like three more... Uh, layers of stone in the walls before I hit the outer edge of the quarry. Now, technically, I can just simply keep mining and mining and mining laterally. But, you know, they get, there gets to a point where you've mined out an entire hill and you've gone so far deep and so far across that you start mining the hill next to it. I've done that. My very first try, too. It made things interesting. But I digress. Yeah, so I do have some stone blocks, well, stone bricks to uh, continue on construction of the project. And I do have another round of cobblestone currently cooking in the furnaces. And speaking of the massive, massive project that I keep alluding to, that if you've seen pretty much any of the prior episodes of this that I've made, uh, you already know its name, and it's right there back behind the clouds and the bamboo and this massive tower of dirt known as Nimbus, city above the clouds, because I fully intend for it to become a uh, city. Even if not an actual lived-in, fully functioning city, because, uh, well, it's just me out here. By my lonesome. And villagers do not spawn naturally. I mean, they do spawn naturally. Uh, as long as they're already in a village and there's more doors than what the game allows for a villager. But, uh, they don't just spawn naturally in the middle of nowhere. As far as I remember, they don't. So, that's a sheep. Uh, have various sections of trees growing. Probably not enough to actually harvest, but, oh well. Of course, when it's raining, I can't act, don't actually know if it's daylight out or not. So let's head back to the squirrel hut because I do see that creeper. And it's not nighttime yet, so mood point. How about now? Still no. Watch the creeper just suddenly get closer, and as soon as I remove this uh, dirt block, it's just going to show up and blow up everything. How about now? Or now? Or now? Alright, not even gonna chance it, just gonna hop in the water. Where did he go? Alright, must have went off in a different direction. I should not complain. Now, I haven't really done everything that I wanted to do in between episodes. I did want to finish the five remaining water elevators that I had made. And uh, work on some more of the bridges around the lattice. Now, this is basically the stuff that I have done last episode. Just more of it. Uh, my plan was to actually work on the center because I have special plans for the center part. But, uh, while I did mine two more rounds of stone and do a change a little bit around the uh, water elevators of the lattice, at least the end points on the lattice, I basically moved the doors from the outer edges to the sides and inside. Just more for security purposes, so that way if someone not nice shows up, uh, they can't just simply walk up here, walk into here, and then head all the way straight up to Nimbus City above the clouds. And yes, I do fully intend to say the full name every time I realize it. Also, there was one other thing that I, uh, now I remember what it was. Uh, I remember that when I uh, was working on this, I couldn't figure out why the torches weren't even on this side as opposed to this side. 
And while editing the last video, I realized why. It's because the fences are off. So this actually has to go bye-bye. And it gets added to this side. So now it's even. And now it looks uh, the same as the other side. So that answers that question. Alright, so it's the edge and then two. Just trying to figure out spacing of things. Yes? Yeah. It's edge two and then fence. So from here to here, we'll... So from there to there, that'll be the bridge. And now it's nighttime. And I should have packed a bed with me. However, hopefully... Things won't spawn until I get up there. I do have a bed up in Nimbus City above the clouds. Thing is, it's out in the open. Very out in the open. Yeah, there's actually a witch all the way on the other side. Yep, that witch is still there. Just gonna deal with it the old-fashioned way, and by that I mean leap off of Nimbus City above the clouds into the water, trying not to smack onto anything that looks like land, and hopefully I'm now far enough away for the witch to spawn. Plus everything that was up there that I didn't notice. Oh, there's a skeleton over there now. Okay. Now we just simply... But then the question becomes, how big do I actually want this thing? So, the middle section over here isn't going to be a uh, water elevator like the surrounding uh, spots. My plan for this area is to basically be a defensive emplacement or a defensive strong point that anybody defending Nimbus City above the clouds can just basically hang out in here and then if... Uh, someone not nice or any other type of evil mob or uh, never do well like I think is the old timey name for such people ever comes in uh, in order to actually get up to Nimbus City above the clouds via water elevator they're going to have to at most come here or like here or anywhere else and the reason why I moved the doors over here is so that way anybody uh, manning the internal garrison of the lattice should, in theory, be able to actually pick them off with arrows. But the question is, how big do I actually want to make the uh, internal section of, well, the defensive point of the lattice? I mean, this right now is about as big as any of the older, uh, plots. Yeah, so right now it's about as large as... Know, any of the islands for the water elevators so 
you know, I'll be about this size and this size. But I had thought on um, basically double lining the uh, walls with stone. So if it's like wall, as well as putting in arrow slits. So basically, if this is one corner of the wall. Now I would need to put the arrow slit like right here. I mean, maybe. I guess that could technically kind of work. One archer would essentially be doing double duty for two of the areas, and you can't really see the corner. Uh, elevator, but you know, I do plan on having a uh, roof up top, so we'll see how it goes. If I really don't like it, I can always just simply take it apart and well, rebuild. No law saying I can't rebuild everything. I only have one spare torch. Okay. And have like a torch right there. Just to light everything up. And I had hoped for it to be bigger. I mean, I can technically make it bigger. I had plans that it would be bigger and then I have like corner towers out here and all that fun stuff, but... I have to keep remembering, every uh, layer I make going outwards is one more layer less that this bridge is. I mean, I could make it the uh, fortified structure all the way out to here, but then there'd be no bridge. So I have to balance one thing that I want against another thing that I want. I guess thematically it's technically kind of better if it's well about the same size as one of the water elevator islands. Of course now one other thing that I had planned on doing was making uh, the underlayer of the uh, garrison, or well, the lattice garrison, uh, basically two layers down stone so that way it's harder for anybody to actually dive underneath and then try to dig in through the garrison this way however one thing that I've done basically once for a castle that I once built was to have what I like to call an undermoat which is this layer of water and I'm usually building over water or in water or ground water uh, but it's basically this layer of water underneath uh, whatever structure I'm building. So if anyone were to try to dig directly underneath my structure, uh, while they would have uh, originally initially hit you know, whatever I have at the very bottom of the construct, once they dig into that, they would eventually find water, and, which would hopefully make it a little bit more difficult for them to uh, dig the rest of the way out. And once again, this sun is setting, so... Well, I have plans for that as well. But uh, I'll get to that when I get to that. Right now, I just want to finish 
well, at least part of the lattice. Like I said, I had hoped to actually have it, uh... The remaining sections of the lattice done outside of the center area, but I never got around to it. Story of my life. Chapter 1, he was born. Chapter 2, he died. Alright, so that was technically unplanned. One thing you gotta be, uh, worry about while building underwater is your oxygen meter, which are these little bubbles above the food line. And, you know, once they go out, you start taking damage, so... Now, there are a couple ways to... Aid, that you, things you can do to aid you in, um... Underwater construction. Uh, one is if you're right close to the surface, you can just simply pop back up to the surface and come on. Uh, get more oxygen that way. Of course, one problem, with unrelated problem, is um, you know it takes forever to mine anything out underwater, so make a mistake like I just did, uh, it's gonna take a while, especially with stone tools. Shout on some sweet berries. Interesting. And that way my care uh, that way the character heals. And then we just keep at it. Okay, so, last time I built an undermoat, in addition to having a layer of water, underneath it I had a layer of sand. So, basically, when somebody, if somebody were to try to uh, dig underneath of it, uh, once they dug into the undermoat, there'd be a layer of sand which would fall down on top of their head, followed by a cascade of water, but... This was back before it took a forever and a day, well, back before uh, they changed things around in New Minecraft or made everything more PC uh, similar uh, compared to the original version of Minecraft they had for the Xbox. And in that version, uh, you didn't swim up as fast, especially against a current. Almost got trapped in the undermoat. So, like, you've seen me go up a water elevator. It used to be it didn't happen that fast. So, at the time, I figured, you know, have the uh, sand to hit him in the head, so that way any means of going up and uh, they'd have issues because they would suffocate because of the sand. And even then, even if uh, they managed to deal with the sand relatively quickly, or at the very least to the point where... Uh, they could get past the sand, they still had a large column of water to deal with, and assuming that they just dug a straight tunnel as opposed to a small room directly underneath where uh, the undermoat was, they wouldn't, uh, well, they wouldn't have anywhere to get outside of the water column and would eventually suffocate due to the water. That was the plan. Now, since sand does not want to, uh, well, I, I phrase that. Since sand constantly wants to adhere to the laws of gravity, one of the only two blocks in this game to actually do so. Building the undermoat this way with the sand layer is uh, tricky, especially considering the one issue that I had with the sand layer for the undermoat was thinking if somebody actually were to dig out the sand and have it fall, it wouldn't be all that easy to well, replace it. I would basically have to dig down underneath uh, the bottom layer of my castle to the under where the undermoat is, technically fix the undermoat first, the layer underneath the undermoat first, 
and uh, then put the sand back. Well, if I did accidentally get rid of the water, replace the water. So basically, if uh, uh, you listening who could figure out what exactly I was rambling on and on and on about, congratulations. Because uh, I certainly almost lost my train of thought at least twice. But basically, for this undermoat, for this garrison, uh, I'm not going to include a layer of sand. I could. I could make it uh, a little bit deeper. Of course, the whole sand part was because that construct, while I was building in a uh, rather deep section of ocean, the construction that I was doing actually went underneath the ocean, so it actually ended up being on the ground, whereas this is still floating above the water, a relatively deep section of water, I should point out. And I'm running out of O2 relatively quickly just uh, building this thing. So I can't imagine, unless somebody had like a potion of water breathing down here, uh, that they wouldn't have an easier time trying to get in. Uh, especially with... Well, I'm assuming if somebody's attacking this place, somebody else is defending it. Hopefully several somebodies. But I would assume anybody attacking this place uh, would... What's the word I'm looking for? I have to deal with the actual defenders. Darn it. I was afraid I was going to do that. I accidentally put a uh, stone block inside the... I do have enough to do with it. Uh, inside the undermoat, so... I basically gotta clear that block. Now, I was did mention several ways to uh, survive underwater. It didn't really get into exactly how to do all that. So, one thing is a potion of water breathing. If you have access to uh, an alchemy station, in which case you're probably rather advanced in the game and don't really need a assistance. Huh. They fixed that too. I'll say another way would be to put a door in underwater and at least originally in the old version of Minecraft, the uh, this door would create a space of air, uh, an air pocket space that you could basically uh, sit in and use that as a kind of diving belt. Looks like they didn't do that. Well, it looks like they changed that. One well, of the many things I thought I knew about this game that uh, is no longer relevant. So let's see if they fix the uh, other version of the diving of a diving belt. But since the door trick doesn't work, we may actually have to deal with this later because the sun is technically setting. Yeah, let's get back. Come on. But yeah, as fast as I'm going up this thing now, it didn't used to be this fast. In fact, going down a column of water was actually faster than going up it. Now I think the opposite is true. And now there's a skeleton. Wee.
Alright, so basically Diving Bell uh, version 2 is to basically displace all the water with some other kind of block, in this case dirt. And since water likes to spawn when it's next to even more water, you basically have to make a large uh, space and then basically carve out the middle. Come on. All right, and that didn't work. Because it's still technically water in there. I moved the dirt block holding the door. Every night the sweet berries filled up the food meter for, uh, more. But, oh well. Of course, this is a bad design. Most well, little would be because it's still technically water. All right, so. It is rather dark in here. But at least this little trick still works. Sort of, kind of ish, maybe. Need a torch so I can see. But, so this used to be water, and now it's not. So, if I basically hang in here... Actually, you know what? Rather than removing the side... Make a little diving bell-esque area here. I'll go this way. I can't really get back up here, but I don't really need to be inside this area. Just, I need space to actually breathe, so. Alright, so now whenever I need water, I can just simply swim up here, rather than having to swim all the way around. And that would be useful, except I'm pretty much almost done here. So, it's basically just... Of course, there's that one block on the inside I gotta get rid of. This is gonna be a problem. Alright. It's just taking up all my O2 just to get to where I need to go. Alright, new plan for the Undermoat. If I can get up. My one thought was to actually remove the water, remove the block on the inside, and then deal with it that way. But now I'm thinking, I just remove it this way. 
Yeah, I mean, this is the bad block right there. The water's already reformed. What I can do is just break this block out this way, put it back here, this block thusly, this block thatly. What is going on down here? Is it nighttime again? No. It's just because I'm directly underneath Nimbus City above the clouds, it's hard to tell what uh, time of day it is. Because the actual city is blocking all sunlight. So this area is going to be from henceforth perpetually dark. Alright, so then other than some random spurs underneath in my eh, questionably successful diving bell, uh, the undermoat should technically be done. And now we almost kill the character. Or practically kill the character because I'm now down to three hearts. Just to get rid of one misplaced stone brick block. Because it takes forever to mine anything underwater. Sounds like somebody's on fire up here. Whoa! <laughs> that gave me a jump. Do not expect the witch out there. I guess it is dark, so technically it should be able to technically spawn. Alright, you know what, before I do anything else, I should track down more torches. I was gonna kill this squid. I got nothing against squids, but they give out ink sacs, which are useful for dying things. And... While I build plenty of stuff in the water, I don't often go swimming in the water, so I don't often come across squids. Ah, oh, you're still cooking away. Okay. So, two questions. Where am I keeping the spare ink sacks, and do I have any spare coal? Some sparing sex right there. I do have some coal. 62 units of it. And I guess another big question is where are my spare sticks? Oh, look, another squid. What was that? Oh, I got attacked by a drowned. Okay. I mean, that seems fair. I did kill a squid, after all. So there we are there. We have the torches on the inside or outside of what I affectionately call arrow slits. Oh, that 
should be all lit now. I just gotta take care of this thing. You know, there is one burr store I left I gotta deal with. And hopefully I can get rid of it before, well, character dies. I think I got it. Yep, I got it. Okay, cool. Now I just gotta worry about the diving bell. Now, I put all these things uh, in without thinking, you know, I should probably be careful because I'm going to have issues getting rid of all of this. Of course, dirt's easier to get rid of than um, stone, so shouldn't be too, too hard. I guess standing on the block allows me to harvest it faster. That's interesting. Because I guess technically it's not considered a water block at that point. Given how the actual water was pushing me around. Did he just spawn there? Don't actually know. Interesting. Alright, so then I'll have doors here and uh Alright, so somebody's on fire in the corner. I know I did see a spider, which is the only reason why I haven't jumped straight back down to the uh, lattice yet. Because I want to kill said spider and hopefully get string. And of course, my sword broke. And I didn't get any string. Okay. Did you drop anything? Some arrows and a bone. Yeah, some arrows and a bone. Okay. Of course, now that I got down and can't really jump back up, question becomes, how do I get back up there? And the answer is this way. Then we build what is essentially going to be the upper floor, ceiling, what have you, of the garrison. Alright, and I am pretty much out of uh, stone brick blocks right now. There, there, 
ladders down so I can get all the way back up. And then the arrow, or the uh, arrow slits are out here, so the archers can see. Oh, get slightly above. So I'm guessing, I guess if an archer were to crouch, they should be able to shoot anything on top of the water elevator exit point. So I should be good there. You guys are still cooking away. Interesting. I'm always doing that. Keep forgetting that plant and eat are the same essential button. And if I'm pointing at grass, it plants it as opposed to eating the sweet berry. Do I have a spare sword somewhere? No, but I do have a dumping spot for random bones and some arrows. And per the usual, one of these days I'm going to organize everything. Eventually. And I have a wooden sword. There we go. I mean, I would have had two spare sticks anyway from, uh, if I turned every unit of coal into torches, I would have had two spare sticks anyway, and now I have only one spare stick to worry about. And I almost ran back to the lattice of Nimbus City Above the Clouds without the stone brick blocks, which is the sole reason why I came over here. The building of a new sword is just simply extra. That's weird, because when I put a torch down here. Hmm. Oh, I guess I missed one. Anyway. Alright, well, I originally had planned on putting things like beds and some storage areas for anybody planning on living in, uh, here as a garrison, at the very least temporarily. Uh, just simply in case if there was a siege, uh, there's no water elevator from the garrison to the rest of the city. So, well, outside of here, but I'm assuming if there's a siege, the guys in the garrison will eventually be cut off. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put it up one extra layer. So I'm going to put stone brick here to make another line of arrow slits. Alright, and unlike uh, the arrow slits lower down where it's two rows of stone completely flat, I'm not going to have a uh, line of stone here so that way any archer here would be able to hopefully aim slightly down. As opposed to, you know, if I were to put stone here, you know, they couldn't hit right here. Whereas they can now. And uh, night has actually fallen. Again.
Ideally, if I had enough doors, I could block this in and just keep working, but I don't have enough doors, so... I guess I'm just building throughout the night because I don't feel like running all the way back up to Nimbus City above the clouds or the Squirrel Hut. So I'm fairly certain it's gotten so dark now that if I were to try that, anything, things would have spawned on the way in. And that's actually a creeper. And it is literally heading straight towards me. Okay, fine then. We're going to have to deal with this the uh, slightly difficult way. By that, I mean in the water. So I'm going to kill this spider. I'm just going to let you explode. All the effects, but none of the boom. Actually, that's not true. All the boom, just none of the effect. Alright, so... Of course, the thing is, if I have arrow slits right here, there's not going to be enough space for things like beds and whatnot. Still. They won't really need to aim up, I don't think. I'm trying to debate if the area, well, this line of stone, if I want to leave it open for the, this is a bad idea. Now I'm going to go back in, but I just replaced that. Anyway, as I was saying, if I want to leave uh, the outer edge open right here or close it off with stone. I left it open on the lower ones. Might as well leave it open on the upper ones. means I get to do this. Then this layer will enclose everything off. Hmm. That was an Enderman, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was. Where'd he get the dirt from? you mind? I'm building here. Well, as long as he isn't going to mess with what I'm building, I guess I really shouldn't care about him. So long as I don't look him in the face, so I've been told, he shouldn't become aggravated at things. Of course, if he does get aggravated, we're also right above water. So I wonder if I can actually just push him off. I can actually push him off.
Yeah, I wonder if that made him angry. I saw him flash red, so I wonder if he made eye contact right before he hit water. I mean, it's daylight out now. So hopefully he should despawn. But we're also not under direct sunlight, so... No, there's that factor to consider. Oh, he's right there. Okay. This is not angry. Let me go deal with this creeper real quick. That's a sea turtle. Come on, you. You're in the way of my construction projects. Watch one of these days, they're just going to change that and I won't notice. So I'll be in the middle of the water trying to disarm a creeper and suddenly boom. Alright, so... Probably don't have enough stone stair brick stairs to do this. But one thing that I did, uh, did, did read was... If I put, like, a ledge around any sort of construction that I have, and I like using stone brick stairs for this, uh, spiders can't actually climb up on top of it. So like for instance, if this were right here, a spider could technically climb up this roll and get up to the uh, top of the garrison. However, because these stone brick stairs are in the way, they can't climb directly up. So. A lot of times when I'm building a wall that's not massively, massively, ridiculously high, uh, I'll generally put uh, either upside down stairs or... Well, not generally upside down stairs. They would be upside down stairs. And I am actually one staircase shy of what I want, of what I need. Okay. I mean, I do have plenty of stone bricks. And I also got a workbench up top in Nimbus City above the clouds. Shouldn't be too hard to make one thing of them. And should also hopefully will allow that uh, Enderman to just despawn. I mean, yes, I could technically fight it and kill it. I was kind of hoping it would uh, die in, as I pushed it off into the water, but um, I made an entire stack, didn't I? Yes, I did. Okay. Okay, now that the uh, upside down stairs are in place, and I probably should have actually put in fen uh, built fencing too. I'm not going to put arrow slits out here because this is going to be the roof of the garrison, and they're already taller than the water elevator exit points, so if anybody's up top that shouldn't be up top, they can always shoot them out that way as well as at any of the doors. The only problem would be is what if people you know, use the actual water elevator 
ends as cover, so they can't hit on the opposite side of that, of the um, water elevator from here. So we might need to figure out some other deep, uh, type of defensive strong point for that. Also, I do need to put in doors here. Unfortunately, I don't think I have any spare oak available to build the doors themselves. And the oak tree mine isn't fully grown yet, so... It's taking longer than I'm used to. But that's why I moved all the doors to the opposite end, so that way people can't actually get to the water elevators without coming into range of the garrison. And there are zombies up here. Okay. Because it's that dark up here. Why am I taking the water elevator down? It's faster just to jump. Now I'm also out of ladders, too. I guess I don't really need to go up that high. Well, maybe I don't need spare ladders up here. I guess this can work. Yeah, and I can put doors in here and we should be good. Of course, if that's the case, then technically, put the torch right here. Nah. I don't like it. I don't always like having a torch right in the fa character's face. Alright, so... I need to figure out what I'm doing at the very top. But... I wasn't truly planning on having that accessible, truth be told, although... Could always put a ladder up there somewhere. Just so that way, on the off chance, people can get up there. So, still needs a little bit of work. Need to put in all the various doors. Need to figure out what I'm doing at the very top of the garrison. It wasn't exactly like how I, how I envisioned it originally. Uh, most notably... I, as I said before, I originally had expect, uh, intended to have, like, little corner turrets jutting out this way and 
extra space inside so that way people could have beds or extra storage for ammo and other personal belongings in case again a siege hit uh, Nimbus City above the clouds and whoever's manning the garrison can stay in there for the long term. You know what, let me finish the rest of the lattice and then I can see what it looks like nearly or mostly complete and then I can decide if in fact I actually want to change it for, well, now. I mean, it's not like it's made out of obsidian. I can always, using a linear liminal supply of stone pickaxes, take everything apart and build it anew. And I just may, because I'm crazy like that. But uh, all of that's going to be another issue for another time, because I'm going to call it here. Everybody stay safe from the plague, and um, have a good day.